graves into gardens. Amen? You know, it, Romans 8.28 says, for those who love God, God can use anything that's going on as a benefit. And I don't know what you have brought with you today, right? I don't know what kind of week you've had, but today, God is here to meet your needs, right? God is here to ease that burden, to bring restoration. And uh, we just want to thank you. You know what? You guys can have a seat. If you're a guest here, we, we just want to welcome all of our guests. I know I met a couple of you uh, right before service. And we really count it an honor for you guys to be here. I was talking to somebody before first service, and I made the comment that 8 o'clock on a Sunday is like 6 o'clock any other day of the week, right? Which is probably the reason you guys are at the 11 o'clock service, right? I get it. I get it. Uh, but we really just want to honor all of our guests. And if you would, we would love for you to take just a moment and fill out a Connect card. You can find it in the seat back pocket in front of you. We promise not to hassle you. We're not going to show up unannounced at your house. We just would love a record of your, of your visit and to find out how we as a church can better serve your family, what we can do if there's anything that you need prayer for, any way at all we can serve your family. Or maybe you've been coming for a while and you need to update some information. The Connect card is a great way to do that. This is the point in our service where if you are a guest, this isn't for you. This is for Vibrant, okay? You can participate if you want, but this is whenever we come and we get the opportunity to give. What I love about being able to give is one of my core values is that the purpose of wealth is ministry. And it takes money to spread the word. It takes money to, to spread the gospel and to build the kingdom. And you don't give too vibrant, you give through vibrant, right? Look at all the ministry that took place yesterday for those of you who are aware, and Pastor Michael's gonna share a little bit about that in a minute. But we aren't able to do that, to make a difference in the lives within these walls, in our community, and in the world. We can't do that without you. But it's also a way for you to partner with God with your finances, right? I mean, why would you not want to partner with the God who spoke the stars into existence, right? I mean, I own a business, and if I'm gonna partner with somebody, you know, there's some certain characteristics I'm looking for. God meets them all, right? So there's three different ways you can give. You can give online at vibrathtx.com. You can text to give 84321. Uh, and text the amount, it'll walk you through some steps there. Or the ushers are gonna be coming, uh, passing a bucket you can give in there. But we just wanna thank you for your faithfulness and let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you so much that our jobs aren't our provision, that you are our provider. Father, we look to you, we thank you for the opportunity we have to give. We thank you for the ability to give and we ask that you would bless this gift, that you would bless the giver, that you would give the leadership of this church wisdom on using these finances to best help grow your kingdom and bring life change. We thank you so much for it. In the wonderful name of Jesus, everybody said, amen. Hi, I'm Angie. Welcome to Vibrant Church. If this is your first time joining us today, we are so excited to have you. We'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to fill out a Connect card. We use this information to see how we can best serve you and your family and how we can be praying for you. You can find it in the seat back pocket in front of you or go online at vibranthtx.com info. If you fill it out here, leave it in the offering bucket or simply turn it into the info table after service. Here at Vibrant, we are real people with a real passion to live vibrant life in Jesus. But what does that mean? If you find yourself asking this question, or you'd like information on taking next steps to get more involved, 
Next, step one is today, immediately following first service, to the double doors to the left in the worship center. This is where you can learn more about the vision and values here at Vibrant, as well as the government and finances of the church. Come discover the gifts and abilities that God has uniquely given you and learn how to use those to best serve those around you. We would love to see you for next step one today and again next Sunday for step two. As always, childcare and snacks are provided. If you haven't already, we'd like to encourage you to download the Church Center app. This is your one-stop shop for everything here at Vibrant, where you can access things like giving and tithing, check in for kids, and information on life groups and other events coming up on the church calendar. It's our work hard, play hard weekend. We hope you had a great time at Serve Day yesterday, and now it's time to play hard at our Dream Team Party. We'd like to invite you, if you serve anywhere here at Vibrant, to join us tonight at Sawmill Park Pool from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We partnered with the Community Assistance Center for Montgomery County. We are putting together basic hygiene kits for students K through 12. Today is the last day to turn them in. Deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, and you can turn in all donations to the cafe right behind me. Here at Vibrant, we wanna develop leaders that are kingdom influencers beyond what happens on Sunday. Vibrant College is launching this fall. If you want to grow your leadership or deepen your biblical knowledge, Vibrant College is for you. If you want to learn more information or sign up, go to vibranthtx.com college or talk to anyone here on our pastoral team. We are so honored you took time out of your week to join us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of service. Well, we're going to enter back into a time of worship. Will you stand with us? This next song that we're going to sing has been one of my absolute favorites for the past few months. Um, it's called This Is How I Thank the Lord. Um, I love the lyrics. I love the whole message of it. It reminds me of a passage, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, in Lamentations chapter 3. In Lamentations 3, it starts at the very beginning with the writer talking about all these afflictions that he's going through, how he feels like he's been deprived of peace, he feels like he's been far from God, that, um, that everything in his life is just going wrong. Like whatever the right way is, he is at exactly the opposite part of it. He even says at one point that he feels like he's chewing on gravel. He spends the first 20 verses talking about this affliction and this turmoil and this, this, this heartache that he has. And then in verse 20, I love what it says. It says, but I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, says my soul. Therefore, I will put my hope in him. And I think sometimes we get caught up, or at least I do, in my own head of thinking like, you know, whatever I'm going through, no one really gets it. It's, it's too much for God, it's too sad for God, it's too, it's too different. And that person over there who's rejoicing and, and shouting for joy while we're, um, while we're praising the Lord, like they might be experiencing that, but like that's not my story and no one else gets what I'm feeling. But the reality is, is we do have all the same story. The reality is that we were once broken and lost and hurting. And when Jesus came down to earth, died and rose again, he made a way for us to be reconciled to him. He made a way to have life and life more abundantly. So whenever we're singing this song, we're not just singing in hopes that one day we'll be able to be happy, but if, if nothing else, he's saved us and he's given us an opportunity to have a relationship with him. I love in Psalms 103, it says, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he's done for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. This is why we thank the Lord. He redeems me from death. He crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. He's slow to get angry, filled with unfailing love. He doesn't punish us for our sins. He doesn't deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He's removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. And I love that because it's great to read that and be reminded of like he's done all these things for us like he's so wonderful but if he never did another thing for us if he never gave us another blessing the fact that he sent his son and gave us an opportunity to be in a relationship with him he gave us an opportunity for our sins to be separated as far as the east is from the west 
One of my favorite lines in this next song says, he keeps no record of wrongs. And that is enough to shout about. That is enough to get excited about. He doesn't keep record of what I've done. I don't have to earn his love. God is not mad at you. He's slow to get angry. He's compassionate. And every day we get a new opportunity to be in relationship with him. Our prayer team is going to come forward. If you have something that you're going through that you'd want someone to pray with you, pray over you, they would love to do that with you. Let's pray together. God, we love you. We thank you for your unending mercies. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that if, if nothing else, if everything in this world is stripped away from us, we are steady and secure on the fact that you love us and you've given us a relationship with your son. We thank you, Lord. You are so good to us. We'll never get tired of singing your praises and of your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't have enough words, I'll never live enough lifetimes to fully know your worth, to know all that you deserve. In all of my deceptions, in all of my duplicity, now there is no record, you assume the best of me. And this is how I thank the Lord for saving me when I was weak. So I will sing, this is how I thank the Lord for everything. This is how I thank the Lord and all of my affection and everything I have to give. The sum of my attention is measured in the praise I live. This is how. And this is how I thank the Lord for saving me when I was weak. So I will sing, this is how I thank the Lord for everything. This is how I thank the Lord. And this is how I thank the Lord for loving me, for keeping me. So I will sing, this is how I thank the Lord for everything. This is how I thank the Lord. I don't have enough words I'll never live enough lifetimes To fully know your worth To know all that you deserve And all of my deceptions And all of my duplicities Now there is no record Cause you assume the best of me And all of my and all of my deceptions And all of my duplicity Now there is no record You assume the best of me And this is how I thank the Lord For saving me when I was weak So I will sing This is how I thank the Lord For everything This is how I thank the Lord Sing it again this is how I 
options In all of my deceptions In all of my duplicity Now there is no record You assume the best of me In all of my deception In all of my duplicity Now there is no record You assume the best of me All of my In all of my deceptions In all of my duplicity Now there is no record you assume the best of me this is how and this is how i thank the lord for saving me when i was weak so i will sing this is how i thank the lord for everything this is how i thank sing it again and this is how i thank the lord for loving me for keeping me so i will sing this is how i thank the Lord for everything this is how I thank can we lift our hands and sing that again and this is how I thank the Lord for saving me when I was weak so I will sing this is how I thank the Lord for everything this is how I thank the Lord one more time and this is how I thank the Lord for loving me for keeping me so I will sing, this is how I thank the Lord for everything. This is how I thank the Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, you are so good. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our
Come on, church, can you lift up a hallelujah right now if he's truly been good to you? Can you lift up a shout of praise and adoration? Come on, church, I feel like we can do it a little louder. I feel like we got a little bit more praise in us, like we got a little bit more adoration in us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Let me tell you what, God is good all the time amen why don't you high five your neighbor as you're seated and tell him god is good high five your neighbor amen amen i love it thank you so much for being here my name is michael my wife carmen and i we have the tremendous honor and privilege of serving this church as lead pastors and we're so thankful that you chose to be at church today we know that you could have been thousands of other places but you chose to be in the house of god and so can we just take a moment and give it up like crazy for all of our first time guests thank you so much for being here we honor you we love you welcome to the family and uh, we love you. Th so thankful that you are here. Man, I'll tell you what, yesterday was impactful. It was incredible, wasn't it? Serve day. Well, let me hear from my serve day people. Come on. Really quickly, because she's here, really quick, I got to honor somebody. And I think she's in the room. I hope she's in the room. But yesterday was a very special day. And she served at serve day all day long on her birthday. But Lydia, where's Lydia at? Where's Lydia? Right back here, come on, give it up for Lydia on her birthday. I love that she served at serve day, got here early, left late, serving people, incredible, I love that. Let me give you some reports of what you did at serve day yesterday. Just yesterday in three locations, you served over 700 meals to the community. Come on, give it up for yourself. You hosted two block parties, hung out with tons of people, connected with them. And I'm proud to tell you today that because of your efforts and you praying with people from our connect cards, nine people gave their lives to Jesus just yesterday. Just yesterday in the park, on the side of the road. I love that, I love that. You were able to write 75 letters and cards to shut-ins that don't get visited by anybody, but you are able to not only just step in the room with the card, but you get to bring Jesus with you because you prayed over the cards, you connected with them, you're, you're ministering to people, 75 people. Come on, that's good. Let's clap our hands for that. And our community beautification team, they cleaned up the entire eight block area around our church so much so they went and collected every piece of trash. They actually found a tire, y'all, in the middle of the woodlands. They found a tire and wheeled that thing back to the church to put in the dumpster. Come on, that's awesome. We can clap for that too. And our kids team served so faithfully so all of our parents could go out and, and, and serve yesterday. Can we give it up for our kids teams? And I wanna tell you, we were able to do all of that yesterday. We were able to cover all of the finances and fund the entire project just straight from your tithe and offering because of your faithfulness. We didn't have to take an extra offering because our finance team budgets well and I wanna honor our finance team that does an amazing job to make that happen. Can we do that? Thank you so much for serving at Serve Day because serve is not just what we do, it's who we are, right? Right? It's, it's just we are all, we just love it. We love it. It's what we live for. And so thank you so much. Today, we, you know, we're in the middle of a season of our church. Anybody love the summertime? Summertime. We're in the middle of a season of our church. What, what I love to do is I love to give voices in our church that, I don't know if you know this or not, but they're incredible communicators that, that attend this church uh, that have communicated to even hundreds and thousands of people that are very educated and uh, very just great communicators of the word. And, and so I love to take a season like this to let our, the communicators that go to this church serve on the teams with you, give, an give them an opportunity to communicate what God has laid 
on their heart. And so today I had the opportunity to introduce Brady Sticker. Y'all love Brady? I've had the opportunity to see Brady grow up over time and, and I've seen him go from a young man to a, a, a young man in college to a young man that got married to a young man that's married with a big beard, right? And then into a dad and a pastor. He, him and his wife, Sarah, were actually our first, our first youth pastors right here at the church. And so let me tell you just a quick story. Um, one of my favorite things about Brady and Sarah is that when they are in, when they say they're in, they're all in. And uh, we found this out very quickly about them. When, when we decided we were gonna plant Vibrant Church, they were one of the first ones to reach out to us. We had a Zoom call with them and they were moving. They decided that the Lord had called them. Uh, the Lord decided more because I know initially, Brady can tell you the story, he didn't want to, but the Lord decided that they were supposed to move here to help uh, plant Vibrant Church. And I'll tell you from that Zoom call, they were the first ones on the launch team. They were the first ones to move here. They were all in from day one, whatever we needed. I mean, they've served on so many teams around this church. And I, I know you look around and you think, man, this church is three years in. Look at all that God is doing. First service was packed too. It's incredible to see all that God is doing and it's awesome. But this doesn't just happen by accident. It happens because of great team members that are all in and ready to do whatever is needed for the call of God and for the kingdom of God. And Brady and Sarah Sticker, they show that, they live that. And so I'm very thankful that not only that they're on the team, but they're my friends. And so can we stand up on your feet and let's give honor to the man of God as he comes to preach today. Give it up for Brady. Amen. You guys can be seated. Man, Pastor Michael, thank you so much for setting that bar way too high. Um, pretend you guys didn't hear that. I'm just some guy talking to you today. Uh, I'm excited to bring the word. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. I want to get a feel of the room today. You guys know how they break generations up into like Gen Z, Millennials, Gen X. Uh, where, do we have any baby boomers in the house today? No, no, no. They probably, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, a couple of baby boomers. Yes. Uh, what about Gen X? Where are my Gen X fam in here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, millennials. Whoop. Yeah. And what about Gen Z? Where are my Gen Z at? Wow, Gen Z. You guys are very loud this morning. Great. Uh, so believe it or not, don't let the beard fool you. I, I am young, I'm not even a millennial. On paper, I'm actually Gen Z. Like I'm probably the only Gen Z person you know that is like married and has a house and like a, a kid. Like it, you can put the picture of our uh, beautiful family up here, my beautiful Sarah wife and little baby River that's having a great time in nursery today. Uh, and what's funny about me, uh, being like right on that cusp of like millennial or Gen Z. Uh, a lot of you guys know me and my dad, we run a business together. And when we'd go to conferences, he used to not have the beard. And whenever he was clean shaven and we would go and like to these conferences together, people would think we were brothers and he loved it. He was like, yeah, you don't have to correct him. Like that's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and so I'm right in the cutoff between Gen Z and millennials. And I have a lot of qualities from both of the generations, right? I'm super active on TikTok. Um, I, I have a very short attention span. I'm sure those aren't related at all. Uh, but then uh, on the other side, I, I feel like I identify a lot with a millennials. Like I still love skinny jeans. I know they're not in style anymore, but I still love my skinny jeans. I'm very into like specialty craft coffee and people hear that about me and they're like, oh, Brady loves coffee. Hey, it's your birthday? Man, here's a Starbucks gift card. And I'm like, thank you so much. That's not, that's not specialty craft coffee, but I will gladly and gratefully take the free Starbucks. Um, another millennial thing about me, I, I'm not going to lie, I'll take a participation trophy if you have one. If you're giving them out, I mean, I'll, I'll take one, put it up on my mantle. 
Uh, one, one millennial thing that I'm not super big on is avocado toast. I know that's like there, like they have a flag and it's like a whole thing. I'm not super big into that. Um, also, I, another thing that millennials are known for that I don't really jive with is Harry Potter. Um, probably because I'm not a sinner and I, no, no, I'm just kidding. My parents loved me and loved Jesus and didn't expose me to that witchcraft when I was a kid. So no, I'm just kidding. Thank, thank you guys so much for not exposing me to Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, anyways, nothing against that. I grew up on, uh, goldfish and VT, any VT fan, v- VT, VeggieTales, yeah, I bet you guys didn't even know we had an acronym, and I'm a big VT-er, um, so something I feel like a lot of the older generation, specifically like baby boomers, uh, one thing they're known for, not, not you guys, the first, first service is baby boomers, uh, they're, they, you'll hear them say things like, oh, these young whippersnappers, they, and their cancel culture, they, they just get offended, Right? They just need to toughen up. They need some thick skin. Uh, they, they get offended way too easily. I hate to break it to you, Meemaw. We weren't the ones burning vinyl copies of the Beatles because of satanic. That was you guys. And, and the thing is, people getting offended is not a new idea. See, people getting offended and getting their feelings hurt, uh, people getting upset about things and getting canceled, it's not a new concept. In fact, if we look all the way back at the first book in the Bible, the very first kids born, Cain and Abel, well, I mean, if you're familiar with that story, Cain literally killed Abel because he was offended about him. Like, imagine how crazy that is. Like, today they just tweet about you. And back then he straight up killed his brother. And so today I want to take some time to talk about how can we respond when we're offended. So we're going to be looking in Acts 16, 25 through 34. And so again, Acts 16, we're going to start in verse 25. And it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And then suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately the doors were open, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw the prisoner doors were open and they were gone, he drew out his sword and he was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord with them and to all who was in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night. He went and he washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once. He and all of his family. Then he brought them up into his house, set food before them, and he rejoiced along with the entire household because he knew they believed in God. Will you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you so much for this word. God, I thank you so much just for your grace and your love for us. Father God, I pray that you just bless this time together as we dive into your word, Jesus. We thank you that you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. See, this is such an amazing story that I've heard preachers talk about time and time again, how whenever you're in a hard situation, if you just pray and God will see you through it and perform a miracle, and that's awesome, like don't get me wrong, but I, I kind of want to take a little bit of a different look at this. Um, so I, I want to talk about how can we respond when we're offended? How do we respond to offense? And so a little bit of context here to this passage, Paul was previously known as Saul, right? And he was literally killing, he was persecuting Christians. Then he turned his life around to Jesus, and then he got a new name, Paul. And then Paul went and spread the gospel. He went to go tell people about Jesus. He went to spread the good news, and then he was thrown in jail because of that, right? And that's where we pick up. And so in this story, uh, while he's in jail, him and his buddy Silas, they start praying, and they start singing, and 
And then God performs a miracle, an earthquake happens. All of their chains and the prison doors open, and they are set free, right? Super awesome. And at that point, Paul had to face the jailer. Paul had to come face to face with the person that was keeping him in chains. Paul had to face the person that kept him in negative circumstances. And and notice, what does Paul do in verse 28? The jailer is about to kill himself. And after seeing the prisoners set free, he knows that the Roman authorities, if they find out that all of those prisoners escaped under his watch, they they were going to kill him. And so he was like, I'd rather just end it myself. And whenever Paul sees this, he says, stop, don't harm yourself. See, the jailer is the person that Paul should hate, but he goes out of his way to save him. I feel like a lot of the times we see terrible things happening in our world and it's easy to just stay quiet. You know, Paul could have taken the easy way out and seen that happen and be like, well, he's going to do whatever he can he's going to do. That's, that's his problem. No, he goes out of his way to save the jailer from killing himself and introduces him to Jesus. So how do we respond when we're offended? Well, number one, don't be offended. All right, sweet. I guess we can wrap it up. You guys want to go to lunch or no, seriously, Paul had every logical right to hate the jailer. He had every right to just let the jailer kill himself or let him die in the hands of the Romans, but he doesn't. He showed zero ill will towards him, and he forgave him. Not only that, but he took that as an opportunity to lead the jailer to Jesus. It can be very challenging and hard in the time we're living in to live this unoffendable life. A lot of you guys know and that I actually work uh, in social media. We, we help churches actually use social media to reach people. And the thing about Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, these are businesses, right? And so if you want to reach people on these platforms, well, you kind of have to spend some money to get the, get the word out, right? And so that's a lot of what we do is we help churches uh, run ads on these platforms to reach people and spread the good news. And so I make a lot of TikToks about that for churches. So I'll make a TikTok helping pastors use social media to reach people. And y'all, some people do not like that. Like, like Christians and like people in ministry don't like that. Uh, I had this one TikTok and it got about 40,000 views. You can go check it out. And if, if you look at the comments, there's over 200 comments of people just going back and forth and back and forth all about whether or not churches should use social media to reach people. And I didn't think this was going to be a super controversial topic, but I'm going to look in the camera. I'm just going to take a stance. Uh, you know, I'm so sorry, and this is my apology video, I am so sorry that we're, that I, I am the reason that so many churches around the country are using social media and they're spending money on these platforms to reach people. I just want to apologize for that. No, like the, Jesus said, go out into all the world, make disciples. Guess what? The world's on their phones. And so that's, that's what we do. And so But if you look at the comments, people going back and forth and back and forth. And so what do we do whenever we see something online that offends us? What do we do when we see that? Well, typically, you go straight to the comments and you let them know why they are wrong, right? Whenever someone hurts us, whenever someone does us wrong, we think, oh, I can't believe he said that about me. Oh, I can't believe she did that to me. Do they know who I am? See, I want to challenge you this morning. I think a lot of the times we get offended because of pride. Because we think so highly of ourselves that whenever someone else says something that we don't agree with or they say something about us, we think we're way too high and mighty for them to even think that, let alone speak that. And so I want to challenge you this morning. But Brady, don't you know Disney's trying to brainwash our kids? Look, I don't know about you, but I've never looked to Disney to be a moral compass for my kids. I don't know when we started doing that. And so I honestly, I don't think we should be surprised when the world acts like the world and then go on social media and complain about it. And then when we try to reach that same world, they look at us like crazy people for going into the comments. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to slow down a little bit and get back to my notes. That's good. Come on. Second Timothy 2, 23 and 24. It says, again, I say, do not get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone, be able to teach, and be patient with difficult people. A lot of y'all didn't know that was in the Bible. You know how I know that? Because I'm friends with you all on Facebook. <laughs> Look, whenever you're offended, whenever you're upset, whenever you see something you disagree with, I want you to ask yourself, how am I going to respond to this? And think, if you're wanting to respond negatively, ask yourself, is this worth losing a friend over? Is this worth burning a bridge and ruining a friendship because of some post about whatever the, the person in the office did, and person in the, the office is in the White House, uh, or whatever political thing people are arguing about today? You know, one thing about me is you, if you're friends with me on social media, you, you might not have noticed this. I really don't post anything political at all. Now, if you were friends with me several years ago, yeah, I was very political, and I, I'm going to be honest, I, I was very vocal, and I would get into arguments, and I would do all the things, because I wanted people to know that I was right and they were wrong, because that's the truth, right? Um, and husbands, how many of you know your wives just have amazing discernment and are just full of wisdom? Because at the time, I was, I was in Bible college, and me and Sarah just got married, and she was like, Brady, you're, she's like, look, I, I understand, like, what you're posting, like, I agree with it, but you're, you're going to Bible college. Like, you're wanting to be a pastor. You're wanting to influence people and, and, and help win them to Jesus. But now all your friends on Facebook just think of you as the crazy kid that's really into politics. So how are you going to win them over if they already think that about you? And y'all, that, that kind of, that changed. That changed me. And so I want to encourage you today. You are called to be a world changer. You are called to be an influencer. And so everything you post online, people are, are making these assumptions about you. And so whenever you post that stuff online and then you go and try to lead someone that read that to Jesus, they're not even going to listen. I see so many arguments online and, and a lot of it. In fact, one of my mom's um, closest friends that she's known for years deleted her and blocked her on Facebook. And my mom will tell you, she's like, I lost a friend over this, this whole political social media thing. And I, I just want to encourage you, what you say online and these arguments you're getting into the comments, is it worth it? Is it worth burning that bridge? So you're called to be set apart from the world. You're called to be a leader. And the devil wants nothing more than to cause division. To, to call division in your marriage, to cause division in your family, to cause division between you and your friends. And that's why the first thing we do to respond to offense is to not get offended. Right? I know that's hard, but the second thing we do is seek unity. Last week, whenever Cole was preaching, he preached an amazing message, and he opened it up talking about the three musketeers. And their motto was, all for one, one for all, united we stand, and divided we fall. And I'm not going to lie, he opened with that, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's preaching about unity, and like being united. I was like, I'm preaching about unity next week. I was like, me and Cole are pretty tight, like I should have ran this by him. I thought he was just going to steal my message, and I was going to be like, oh gosh, I got to write something else. Thankfully, he didn't. He preached an amazing word. If you didn't hear it, go back and watch it. Uh, but if, if we look back at Acts 16:32. It says, and they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all were in that house. And he took them that hour and he washed their wounds and he was baptized at once, he and his family. Then he brought them up into the house, set food before them, rejoiced all along with the entire household because he had believed in God. Let me tell you, there's nothing more uniting than just like eating a meal with someone, right? That's biblical. And 
Personally, for me, I've enjoyed this season of the life group we were in, led by the A-Bears. The, their marriage life group has been such a blessing to me and Sarah because I, part of our recent testimony is when we moved here to help plant Vibrant, we were all in, like Pastor Michael was saying. I think we might have bitten off too much more than we could chew because we were student pastors. We, we helped lead the greeters and the host team. Uh, we were doing all the social media stuff. I was working full time. Uh, we had a baby. And like our community, we're a bunch of 16 year olds. And nothing against you guys, but like I, I needed some friends that were adults. And, and so now I'm happy to say that like we're in that season where we're able to have these, this community and, and people around us that are in a similar stage in life. So I want to encourage you, if you're not involved with a life group, this next semester is coming up just in a couple of months. And you can get involved and you can have that community, right? Now, if I was not, I wouldn't do this. But if, if I was a uh, megachurch pastor, I would probably make some kind of reference to community leads to unity. I'm not going to do that. But anyways, if you want to put that in your notes, you can. So <laughs> a lot of my friends make fun of me because I'm really into comic book movies. But like just the movies. Like I've never read a comic book in my life because I'm not a nerd. I'm just kidding. I am a huge nerd. Uh, but I'm just a lazy nerd. Like, I'm not going to read the movie. I'm not going to read the comic books when they make amazing movies about them. Like, one of my favorites is Captain America Civil War. Such a good movie. It's the first time we see Spider-Man, like Peter Parker, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some of you guys are like, the Marvel Cin... I don't even know what that is. Don't, don't worry. It's, it's fine. Um, so in this movie, the, the Avengers, they're divided on some issues. You've got Team Captain America and Team Iron Man, and they're basically split up b because of these, this disagreement they're having, right? And the whole plot of the movie is about their arguments and how they had to choose sides, and half of them agreed with Captain America, half of them agreed with Iron Man, and then at the end of the movie, there's this fight scene between Captain America and Iron Man, and Captain America almost wins and like almost kills Iron Man. And then, then we realize that the main villain of the movie wasn't Captain America or Iron Man. There was this other guy causing, putting all these dominoes in place to make them fight against each other. Because this villain knew that he wasn't strong enough to defeat them himself, but if he could pit them against each other, then he wouldn't have to do anything. And guys, I want to encourage you, the devil knows that he is not strong enough to overcome the kingdom of heaven, but he knows if he can divide the church, he's got a really good chance at doing that. And so, look, I'm all for discussion and discourse, right? I'm all for talking things out. But there's a difference between arguing and discussing. Like, you, you argue to win. You argue to make sure the other person knows that they're wrong. And then when you discuss, you're looking for common ground. You're looking to find something that you guys agree on and get on the same page. If we look at 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 and 11, it says, I appeal to you, brothers... By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and there's no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind, in the same judgment, for it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there's some quarreling amongst you, my brothers. Hey, Vibrant Church, there's some quarreling among you. Not you, first service, but in the Big C Church. We're so divided on all of these issues, right? And that's why I, I stay out of politics. I'm, I'm on team Jesus. Like, hey, let's just get on the same page. My wife gets mad at me because, like, even, even when we watch, like, The Bachelor. Not, I don't watch The Bachelor, but she has it on, and I'm there with her. And she'll be like, oh, I can't believe she did that. Or, like, oh, there's, like, two people going against each other for the love of one person. And I'm like, I mean, I don't. Whoever wins is great. And she's like, no, you got to be upset about this. And I was like, okay, baby, I'm, I'm upset about this. Yes. Um, so in Matthew 12, 25, Matthew 12, 25, it says, Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. I want to encourage you guys today to seek unity in your family, to seek unity in your marriage to seek unity with your friends and with your coworkers. James 1.19 says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. 
And so, like, honestly, guys, this is just the, the playbook to having discussions and to finding unity. When you feel offended, seek to unite, not just to be right. And this brings me to my third point, is that whenever you feel offended, love that person. Love that person that offended you. If we look back at how Paul responds to that jailer back in Acts 16.31, it says, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to them and all that were in his house. In that same hour of the night, the jailer washed Paul and Silas's wounds, and then they baptized the jailer, and him and his family were, were saved. And they went and they had a great meal, and everyone rejoiced because he believed in God. And so Paul, he didn't just save this man's life from death. He loved them so much that he was able to lead them to Jesus. Not only that, but to be in community with him. This is so backwards from what the world tells us to do. It's so backwards from what culture would do in this situation. Someone posts something on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter that I don't like, I got to let them know that they're wrong. I got to speak my truth in the comments. Whenever someone wrongs me, whenever someone does something to me or my family, I got to wrong them back. An eye for an eye is what we hear. Whenever I was little, I, I rode the bus a lot to and back from school. And I'm going to be honest, like elementary school, middle school kids, we, we were the worst on the bus. Like if you rode the bus in school, you know that you guys did not behave yourself on the bus. If you did, you're lying. Uh, because typically I remember bus drivers being very mean. And whenever we, we went to Disney a while back, uh, back in November, and we brought our, he was like six, seven, eight months old, uh, our son. And y'all, just because the, the baby gets in for free at Disney, it's a trap. Don't do it. It just don't. Uh, I, we went, and he sleeps all the time. He's not going to remember it. And we were trying to go from one park to another, and we needed to take a bus. And he is dead asleep in the stroller, and we walk up to the bus station, and I just had a feeling like, oh, gosh, they're not going to let us just carry the stroller onto the bus. Like, I hope they do, but I don't think so. And sure enough, the bus driver's like, hey, I'm sorry. You can't just, like, bring the stroller on. you got to take the baby out. It's like a safety thing. I was like, oh, please. And he's like, no. I was like, okay, I tried. So sure enough, River being asleep in the stroller, pick him up. He wakes up, starts screaming bloody murder. Like he's, went, you know the, the song, the wheels on the bus go round and round. Okay, well, there's that one part about the baby on the bus going wah, wah, wah. Y'all, that was written about me and our son because he went wah, wah, wah all the way home. And he did not stop screaming. And if you're a parent here, you know the embarrassment. And it's like, oh, my gosh, the baby won't stop screaming. I'm in public, especially on a bus, like a confined space. It, it's the worst. And I, I feel like everyone's staring at me. I feel like the bus driver hates me. And it was so bad. And whenever the bus finally gets to the other park and we start to get off, the bus driver starts to walk towards us. And I'm just going back to the time I was in middle school. And the bus driver would walk to the back of the bus. And I'm like, oh, gosh, it's coming. He's going to let me have it. And he comes up and he's like, guys, I'm so sorry that your baby had to wake up. Here's, here's something that I hope can make it better. And he gives us one of those little collectible Disney pins. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, this is something that the church can take some notes from for Disney. Like, just serving people like that. Because... I thought he was going to be mad at me. My, my view, no offense to any bus drivers in here, but my, my point of view of bus drivers were like, they're kind of mean. And he came up to me. Not only did he serve us and like apologize, he gave River a little Tinkerbell uh, pin. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. And the way that he served us in that moment just reminds me of this verse in Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And I feel like we need to rewire our brain, right? We need to change the way we think, not to be conformed by this world, right? We need to rewire our brain whenever it comes to whenever someone wrongs us. 
See, Paul should have gotten mad whenever the, he saw that jailer and he was faced with them. He honestly, culture would have told him just to let the jailer do whatever he was going to do. But he didn't. Paul showed forgiveness. Not only showed forgiveness, but he showed love. And he built community with the jailer and his family. And we need to respond to others with love because Jesus responded to love to us. See, whenever Jesus was sitting on that cross, being humiliated, literally being beaten to death, I don't think you can offend a person more than that. How does he respond? You know what he does? He prays to God and says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they've done. How are you responding today whenever people offend you? See, we need to change the way we think. We need to renew our mind. And the only way to renew your mind is through the grace of God. See, if you try to do it yourself, you're going to fail every time. And you're going to go back to bitterness. In fact, some of you might have walked in here with some bitterness to someone that's wronged you. Maybe it was your spouse. Maybe it was a family member. Maybe it was an old friend. And look, forgiveness isn't saying that what that person did is okay or is right. But it's you deciding to let go of the burden and being stuck and holding on to that. And so maybe you walked in here with a broken marriage and you feel like it's already done. Maybe you're already separated. But I want to encourage you. There's not a marriage too broken that my God cannot heal. Maybe there's an old friend that you have and you want that friendship back, but you feel like it's too far gone. I want to encourage you, there's not a friend that's too far gone that God can't bring back. There's not a relationship that Jesus cannot restore. The only way to renew your mind is to renew your heart and seek Jesus. Whenever you seek Jesus, pray, God, help me renew my mind. I can't do it on my own. Help me forgive. Help me to show grace. Help me with patience. Would you stand with me this morning? I'm about to pray. And before I do, I just want to encourage you. Maybe you're in here and that's you. Where you have a relationship with a friend or maybe it's your spouse and you feel like it's broken. And you're at that point with a fence to where you feel like there's no going back. Well, I wanna encourage you that there's nothing too broken that Jesus cannot put back together. Would you bow with me? Jesus, we thank you so much for your love. God, thank you for showing us grace whenever we didn't deserve it. Thank you for forgiving us whenever we didn't deserve it. Jesus, right now, I pray that you touch the hearts of the people in this room that are struggling with bitterness towards someone else. God, I pray for restoration in marriages. God, I pray for friendships to be healed. If you're here today and that's you and you want restoration in your marriage or you want a friend back, would you pray this with me and say, Jesus, Jesus, I seek you to renew my mind. Jesus, renew my heart. Help me to forgive. God, I thank you that you are the God of restoration, that Jesus, you are the Prince of peace. And I choose you this morning. I choose you over bitterness. God, I choose you over hurt. Jesus, I choose you over resentment. Help me to forgive others just like you've forgiven me. Amen. Now, look, some of you in here, whenever we're done with church, you need to make a phone call. Or maybe you need to sit down with your spouse and have a heart-to-heart. And I want to encourage you, 
that it takes a lot of humility to be that person to step up and say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not being there and showing forgiveness whenever I should have. But I want to encourage you to take that step today. And so as the band, they're about to sing, I just want to encourage you to press in and just thank God for the forgiveness that he showed us that we were able to forgive others. Amen? Amen. Will you sing with us this morning? as we continue that forgiveness to others. Come on, let's, let's thank him for his mercy. Lord, we love you. We worship you today, God. We're thankful for your grace today. We, we accept that grace on our lives today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, sing it out. I just want, I just I think there's something powerful what, about what Brady was saying earlier. It's just that we choose offense as a choice, but unity is also a choice. Offense is a choice and unity is a choice. And we had the opportunity. Nobody can control your offense except for you, right? So when we walk out of here, I think we all have a choice today. No matter what happens or what circumstances come up in your life, like Brady was saying, I think we have a choice to choose offense or choose unity. Well, today I choose unity, amen? Can you say that with me? Say, I choose unity. I choose unity. I choose you. I choose love because the circumstances of life are not always fair. The circumstances of life are not always perfect and some things you can't control, but you can control your offense meter, right? I choose unity. I want to encourage you this week, live out this message because how many knows that there'll be something come on Monday or something come on Thursday, or you can just drive on Rayford Road at any time, right? There'll be something happen where offense could come, right? But I'm going to choose not to be offended. I'm going to choose to live with love. I'm going to choose to live with unity because that's the way Christ would have us live. And I want to be like Jesus. Amen. Let me pray over you before we dismiss. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your spirit that we feel in this house. I thank you for an incredible word that we get to, to live out as we, we leave here today. 
Lord, I pray that you would drop it in our spirits and we remind us of it throughout the week. God, even when you know, circumstances arise where we could be offended, Lord, I pray that we wouldn't be. Ultimately, we want to be holy and righteous in your sight, Lord. And so today we want to step into what you would have for us, which would be forgiveness, love, mercy, unity. And so we, we, we accept that in our, in our lives and our hearts today. We choose unity in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being here. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next Sunday in Jesus' name.